So, have you heard about Mortal Shell? It's an action RPG developed by a relatively unknown company called Cold Symmetry. Pretty much the one big thing people had to say about it is, hey, look, it's Dark Souls. But there is way more to it. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, let's talk about Mortal Shell, the best surprise hit of 2020. So yeah, it kind of is basically Dark Souls, but that's massively underselling it. What makes it actually interesting is how it's not like Dark Souls. Outside the fantasy trappings and similar game mechanics, there is a lot in this game that is actually totally unlike Dark Souls. Like, there's a lot that make it stand out. For one, the graphics are very good considering that it is a $30 indie budget title, but the gameplay is also really refined, smooth, and fun. There's some very interesting mechanics, and especially for a small-scale game that is attempting to be this big, it's relatively bug-free. We really didn't expect a lot going in, but this game surprised the hell out of us. It's just legitimately really, really, really good. So, what's it about? Well, the story is is told in a very Dark Souls way, as you might expect given the whole overall theme that we're dealing with. But through item descriptions, through NPCs muttering nonsense, and random notes you'll find in the environment, it's very much along the lines of environmental storytelling that we've seen in a lot of types of games at this point. The opening, however, is something else. You wake up as this really weird, white-skinned, Silent Hill-looking monster person, for lack of a better word, and you're in shallow water in a filled void. There's basically nothing going on. You get a weapon and you go through a tutorial. You fight a boss you're supposed to lose against, and then a giant fish eats you, and that's where the game properly starts. After all that, you meet this giant bird-headed guy thing? I don't know. I mean, it's accurate to call it a bird-headed thing, right? Let me look at it. It gives you your first actual objective, though, which is collecting sacred glands of the revered so he can somehow make something called the True Nectar, which apparently gets you out of this weird monster-filled place the game takes place in. There's some really interesting looking NPCs dotted around. I don't really know what the point of this big frog dude is, but it's awesome. They took the time to model a nasty giant frog thing for whatever reason. I mean, it looks cool. Otherwise, everything's very vague. I and mean, even what I said to you is it's weird, but pretty vague. Basically what you would expect from a Dark Souls-like experience. Gameplay, however. First, I want to talk about some of the ways it's similar to Dark Souls, and then we'll talk about how it's quite different, actually. You got an area that's pretty much the Firelink Shrine that functions basically as your base. There's Fire Keepers. In this game, they're called Cesters. Instead of Souls, you get Tar. The Sacred Glands you're supposed to collect are basically Lord Souls. There's a lot in common to these mechanics. But that's not really a bad thing because they introduce a lot of new ideas that make the game feel fresh on top of all that. First, Hardening. There are no shields in this game, instead you protect yourself by doing a special move called Hardening, which turns your character into a statue for as long as you hold down the button. Now, it's not permanent, you're not just invincible, you don't get enough hits and you end up returning back to normal, but while you're hardened, you are impervious to damage. For Dark Souls veterans, hardening is probably going to be one of the toughest things that you wrap your head around because it does not work exactly with a shield. It has a cooldown. You cannot just spam it. It takes a second to actually go into effect, so you can't use it right as an enemy is attacking. You have to be strategic with it. And most importantly, you can use it whenever you want, including right in the middle of an attack animation. On top of all that, it does not use up stamina. You know how blocking in Dark Souls games could leave you end up really vulnerable if your stamina runs out while you're blocking? That does not happen with Hardening. It's actually a really useful tool for restoring your stamina without having to back off in a fight. This takes a while to get accustomed to, but once you do, there's a ton of tactical possibilities that just aren't there in Dark Souls. It's a lot like a lot of other things in this game. It's weird, it's pretty cool, and for the most part, it feels good to use once you're used to it. I will say it will mess with your Dark Souls muscle memory though, because it's mapped to the left trigger instead of L1, the left button. Yeah, it, it did that with me. Next big thing to talk about in the game is shells. You know how you start out as that weird Silent Hill alien thing? That's your true form. And while you can use weapons in the foundling state, it only takes one hit to kill you, so you, you, you don't want to stay that way. You don't wear armor in this game, instead you find corpses of unique characters that your monster dude kind of possesses, and that is called a shell. 
Shells are basically different builds. There's one with a lot of health and armor, not much stamina. There's one with a ton of stamina. It's a really good dodge move, but has low HP. There's one that has a lot of magic power, which is called Resolve in this game. Stuff like that. So basically, you don't have to plan out your character in this game. Instead, this game has pre-made characters, four of them specifically, with their own unique skill trees. You just choose to play as one. You can switch to another one if you don't want to use that one anymore. If a certain enemy is giving you trouble, try a different shell, blah, blah, blah. It's nice to play one of these games where you don't have to worry about the confusing aspects of Dark Souls games, which is maybe trying to figure out how to allocate stats. You're not locked into one form that you can't deviate from once you've collected a shell. You just use it and any shell can use a weapon. So you can mix and match a lot over the course of the game. Other gameplay stuff, there is a Sekiro-like mechanic where the first time you die, instead of being sent back to the checkpoint, the foundling flies out of the shell. If you're able to get back to your body, you come back to life with full health. But like I said earlier, one hit in foundling form, you're dead. And if you die again, yeah, you're going to go back to your last checkpoint. It can be kind of harrowing trying to get back to your body to revive, desperately avoiding enemy attacks. But if you succeed, it does also feel great. It's very satisfying. There are some benefits to this as well. If you're fighting a boss, it's possible to leave a shell behind after you die so that when you fight them again, you'll have a shell around on top of the one that you start out with, meaning you basically get an additional full revive when taking on the boss, assuming you can get back to it. It's stuff like this that makes it feel a little less punishing than other Dark Souls-like games, which is very interesting. There's not a lot of weapons, though. There's just four melee weapons and one long-range weapon, but they are all fun to use, at least. They all have unique special abilities you can unlock by finding special items, then you can forge them to upgrade. The sword you get at the start, the Hallowed Sword, is basically a bastard sword. It's an all-around sword. There's also the hammer and chisel, which work as double knives, which just, you know, look cooler. The Martyr's Blade is a giant two-handed sword with some pretty sweet ice magic attacks. And the Smoldering Mace is a giant mace that is good for crowd control and can set stuff on fire. Smoldering Mace, you see. On top of hardening, there's also a parry mechanic. The timing is closer to Dark Souls than a Sekiro. You want to parry a little bit before the enemy attacks, not right as the enemy attacks you. It can be tricky to learn the timing, but not as tricky as remapping that muscle memory to use the trigger instead of L1 for hardening. At least that's how it worked out for me. But it's worth getting used to as the item you can use to parry called the Tarnished Seal will also heal you if you've got a charge of resolve. That's very useful on account healing items in the early game are pretty scarce. You don't get a lot of refilling healing items like the Estus Flask in the game. You have to rely on these mushrooms that are regrown after you pick them up. You're not going to have a lot of these things, and enemies in general do a lot of damage, so using the parry mechanic to heal can help make things a little easier, at least in that stretch of the game. Probably the most ridiculous weapon is the long-range one called the Ballista Zuka, and yeah, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a big crossbow shaped like a bazooka, and it can fire like a bazooka. It's incredibly powerful. It's very satisfying to use, and yeah, it's pretty ridiculous in all honesty. Now, as far as the graphics go, it's just a good-looking game. I mean, you're looking at it right now. You know exactly what we're talking about. Everything is finely detailed and high fidelity. It's not something you normally see in games like this, honestly. It's not to say Dark Souls is low fidelity or anything, but a lot of Souls-like games tend to favor the gameplay over the aesthetic, and this has just gone full bore with both. It generally has a gloomy atmosphere, but there's a huge amount of variety to the environments you explore, with one place in particular that looks like a heavy metal album cover come to life. So even though the game can be pretty tough, visually speaking, it is extremely interesting to look around and just observe the world you're taking part in. I think a special bit of attention needs to be given to the animations, though, like specifically this attack combo where you attack then grab the sword by the blade and hit them with the hilt is just majorly cool. I mean, that is good animation. In general, the animation also just all around looks fantastic at every moment. There's a lot of life in everything. It looks organic. And really, when animation looks like that, sometimes it actually kind of gets ignored because of how good it just sells the game to you. Also, yes, there is a cat. And yes, you can pet it. Another positive in my book, 
while the game is challenging, it's not so hard that like you're gonna regret playing it. You can pretty much go in and fight any of the main bosses in whatever order you want. It's not too far off from one another in difficulty. You can tackle it at your own pace the way you want to tackle it. Also outside of the boss, the abandoned chamber route, if you beat the boss of this area, it's possible to get trapped, meaning you can't leave or upgrade your equipment until you beat the main boss. I think the developers will probably fix this because I don't really feel like it's something purely intended because it's the first place you can go and at the end the boss can be really hard to deal with outside of that one hang up like it's just a solid game it's not the longest or anything the game ranks crew has beaten it in about 15 hours but it's not like it feels incomplete or anything it feels like a really full experience it doesn't waste your time so i feel for 30 bucks it's a pretty darn good value i really want to see a full-blown sequel honestly this is amazing not just as a proof of concept, it goes up and beyond like just how great the mechanics are and it's just begging to be expanded on. I really personally hope that this game does really well for them and we get to see a nice long career with a big franchise with Cold Symmetry just drip feeding us these beautiful entries into this great new series. Also, there's a loot. I'm not saying you have to play it, but you do get better at it the more times you play it. Just saying, loots. Did you play Mortal Shell yet? Did you have a similar reaction to it as us? Or maybe a completely different one? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought. If you liked this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. And the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.